Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, folks? Yep, it's that time. Your watch, your iPhone is correct. It's time for another exciting, always exciting episode of the Rich Redmond Show. I figured, you know, hey, I work for Johnny Carson, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. Let's just keep it basic here. So thanks for tuning in. Jim McCarthy, co-host, yes. co-producer. How you been, man? You know, since the last show, uh, not bad. I know we had uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris Powell. We're, we're stockpiling episodes because the well has run dry. Right. I've been busy. I'm just doing you the got, tour guys, bus thing. Yeah, you were on an 11-day run out west. Yep, the West so. the West Coast, and Salt Lake City got a better part of my money because I had three and a half days off, so had to do laundry, had to buy coffee twice a day, had to eat twice a day, so Salt, and, and I didn't even make it to the drum shop. There's a great drum shop there, never even got there, really? but, but you know, once you eat sushi and a brick oven pizza and have a couple of, you know, beers, it adds up. Speaking of brick oven pizzas. Yeah, today's guest, wow. we're, we're going to talk about that thing. And, and this is so overdue because I've known today's guest for well over 20 years, hailing from Monticello, New York, calling Nashville home since 96, award-winning drummer. He's worked with so many luminaries in the uh, Nashville scene. Little Big Town, Keith Urban, both those acts for many years. Now he's splitting his time between Carrie Underwood and Don Felder. I'm talking about our friend Seth Roush. Yeah. What's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> I'll add to that. And so we were talking about life. The life that happened between the time that I saw you running around Nashville. Because I moved to Nashville. I moved to Nashville in 97 as a 27-year-old man. You moved to Nashville when you were 18 years old. You skipped college. I'm seeing this handsome kid man you're like you're like you're like a human coat hanger man you could basically can take <laughs> you, this kid could walk into h&m and just take anything off the racks put it on and it's like oh I know. It was just great like, hair it's got the you know piercing blue eyes i know man definitely definitely this is um it's turning red as we speak we're embarrassing him <laughs> we're, and we can't tell he's red because he's so tan i know um <laughs> he's from mowing lawns all day but yeah. i would see him on the scene you'd be working with people like you know amy daly who was my first gig in nashville you'd be working with people like brian mccomas or you'd work with gary allen and joe nichols you were just kind of like doing the thing you always had a gig you were always climbing the ranks and then little big town i felt like it was really kind of like what puts you on the map i was like oh that guy and then you played on one of the records as well well, yeah, it definitely which, felt like a. I had landed on something at that point. Yeah, was, you know. So now the re, when you moved here at the tender age of eighteen, your dad and your uncles didn't they play music? They did. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah, that's I, great. I grew up listening to them since I was, you know, they they um they met with some some record execs in the seventies. Yeah. Been playing their whole life, but they kind of chose to to go the family route and uh, big family upstate New York, forty um, something cousins, yeah. I think. You know, we, we number about 80, 80 something. There's you know, big but, families up yeah. there. Big families. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, just uh, my dad was really into. Well, he wanted to relocate, um, and he was really into the songwriting that was coming out of. Nashville. All over streets and yeah. you know Gary Burr and and all the you know all those hits that were coming out in the nineties and he just um, just wanted to be down here yeah so, and so he did he he moved the family down yeah and so boom you are 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 winning from that because at at eighteen don't you have the protective shelter of like still maybe living in a, in your parents' house uh, I did for like two weeks. You yeah, know, and then he you moved found, down first. Yeah. I stayed up there, finished high school. Uh, he was down here for, you know, almost a year and a half already. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I came down and and uh, I I shacked with them for like you know two weeks. Yeah. And then uh, my sister, older sister, and I actually shared rent. Yeah. And uh, we were off. You That's know? great. That was it. So and now in high school. What was your musical education? Did you do the band nerd thing like I did and play the crash cymbals and the xylophone and all that stuff? Yeah. Or, yeah. We, ironically, we didn't have football in my high school. Uh, I guess uh, there was a casualty on the field at some point in the past. So and, no marching so band. So no marching band. Uh, but there was, you know, concert band. Yeah. So 
I did a little bit of... You're like 1,002, 1,003, and crash. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, a little bit of that. Um, no drum core, unfortunately, but... Now, did you read music in high school? I did. Yeah, that helped. That's uh, helpful. You know, decently. So not, not, not great, but... Drum lessons? Yeah, a little bit. So... I didn't really take formal lessons until i moved down here so what i, I heard from here you know from another so you were just you were like playing with records and focusing on the groove the most important thing making things feel great i heard on another podcast i always try to do my due diligence and listen to at least one other podcast um we have a mutual friend and his name is george lawrence yeah man so george i got i, wonder I need doing. to say hello to him yeah. it's, sometimes he's like oh i haven't talked to him in a year no it's been like four years man yeah but he was teaching at forks and i remember me personally when i moved to town i gave him my cassette demo rich redmond drums and percussion and he listened to it and he's like yeah man and he goes do you know how to play a train beat and so then i went back into his teaching room back there at forks and i played him a train beat he's like oh, all right you'll be fine you know like because i went to school with keith carlock and he had taught keith so he was your teacher here yeah in nashville yeah now what did you guys work on um, everything, you know, I just, I, I, I learned by ear. So I just would just soak everything up, yeah. just, you know, and most of the time, no, I don't say most of the time that sounds, you know, I don't want to give myself too much credit, but <laughs> he'd, you know, write something out and I would sit there staring at it for a couple minutes and kind of work my way through it. Yeah. And then he would play it and I go, Oh no, no, I've done that a million times, you know, like, <laughs> but putting it together yeah um but he I was just, showing you what it looked like on a piece of paper yeah yeah yeah. but i just enjoyed you know he just opened my eyes to a lot of uh, ways to use things you know yeah. he was just was he was great yeah and he probably threw your name around for some gigs yeah yeah he kind of was responsible i don't say kind of he you know he he passed off my first real tour bus gig that was with the wilkinsons yeah it's the so because he was doing that um and then he had to step down and uh, threw my name in the hat. And then yeah. that kind of got the ball rolling. Now, what happened with the Wilkinsons, man? Like, they they had a nice run, right? They did. They, I think they, um, well, they're, they're back in Canada. They moved okay. back home quite a few years ago. Um, Can it, Canada supports its artists. So they're probably, you know, they're doing fairs and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Probably doing all right. And I don't think they're doing anything... Uh, as a trio, yeah. country-wise anymore, Amanda and Tyler had a rock band thing that they yeah. were were doing too. Yeah, you know, yeah. but yeah. So what was what what was the family tree like? Wilkinson's was the first one, and then that begat, and then begat, begat. Yeah, and and um, you know, when you list it, it kind of sounds like you know gig hopping, but it just it was like a nice things would kind of trail off, and something else would would be there. Yes. You know, thankfully. And uh, so the Wilkinsons, and then uh, that kind of went into Brian McComas, yeah, which went into Gary Allen, Shadaisy for a minute, yeah. um, and then uh, Joe Nichols, Julianne Huff, yeah, um, Phil Vassar, yeah, Phil Vassar, and then Little Big Town, yeah, Keith, and, yeah, yeah. You know. It's see, but you've you've been gainfully employed for twenty years. I know it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. Now, looking back, um, you jumped in at 18 doing exactly what you wanted to do, even if you had gone to college. So yeah. did you thought of, did you think about them and like, you know, maybe if I go to college, then I could, you know, get better at like timpani and mallets, but I don't necessarily want to be a percussion teacher. And then I like jazz, but do I really need to, you know, what was it? So is that kind of what went through your head? And you said like, I want to ride the bus. I want to play on records. Yeah. That's just what I wanted to do, man. I yeah. just, when I was younger, I just stared at yeah. jackets, CD jackets. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Carlos Vega and Russ Kunkel and Steve Gadd and all these guys. I just wanted to groove, man. I just wanted yeah, you to play. Yeah, re you really, like, I always hear you dropping the names of like the serious kind of like you know, West Coast pocket studio players. So everybody knows about Carlos Vega in the sense that he was this, you know, amazing, Jimmy, you've heard of Carlos, right? He was like a real amazing uh, LA session drummer in the 80s and 90s. And we lost him, I believe, at the tender age of 38 or something. 41. Like, 41. And mm. Jeff Picaro was 38. Yeah. Um, the thing about Carlos that was so tragic is that he had just the ma magical touch, a musical mind, a 
just a beautiful groove, but he, I guess he was suffering from depression, right? And yeah, it's something, you know, so he took his own life. Yeah. I mean, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I just, yeah, I still live and breathe. You know, there's so much lesson in, you know, not only the, the Latin and jazz on this side of the yeah. spectrum, but then was hired constantly to come to Nashville, play with Reba and Jed Atkins not and that. Susie Boggess I did not know. and Vince Gill. He's high load some sound. He's all that, you know, that, that stuff, okay. those Vince Gill records from the 90s. So he just... Yeah, because he would do the GRP. His whole career is like a, a lesson. And yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And then he, he would do like the samba funk, you know, and then he would be able to play with James Taylor. Yeah. And that is, that's, I mean, you have to have the, the, the you have to respect the space mm -hmm. in a major way there, yeah. you know? So if somebody is not familiar with Carlos, what would be like, say, like, three huge records that are like very diverse uh charisma all <laughs> all the way live yeah you know is a, is a really good one charisma uh, with a k it's a mm -hmm. la session band right yeah yeah and then um, uh all the way live yep the vince gill high lonesome sound okay yep and uh and then you know james taylor stuff yeah i mean that's just to name a couple but so do you have like oh, a oh I got one more a Spotify playlist that's just dedicated to this guy and you could just yeah. crank it up and get inspired yeah that's smart so Matt Rowling's remember Matt he yeah. did a solo record in '89 produced by David Hungate believe it or not but it was Patitucci of Citrio Matt John Patitucci Carlos wow just jazz yeah. and it's awesome we're talking straight ahead jazz sting sting duck a ding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Skin guck. No, no, oh, oh, like any of the burning water stuff. Burning water. Burning water. Rock. It's a rock band. Rock band. Mike Landau, uh, Carlos Vega, Teddy Landau, and um Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I like slick too. That stuff is slick. Yeah. It's slick. Like Garibaldi had like a kind of like a slick band called Wishful Thinking. Okay. And um you know, Sklar had that rock band with Ray Brinker called Barefoot Servants. So, okay. like, it's, you know, you got to get your rock on, man. I've, the, the most challenging thing with having a side rock project, like, I would like to have something where we could play, like, four times a year at 3rd and Lindsley, like, pack it out, make yeah. it an event. Who's the front man? Where are we going to find a front man that's going to step in front of that band and own it yeah sing great look great to have the charisma it's hard to find yeah definitely it really is right yep um man but what a story and i just remember seeing you play and i'd be like this kid i mean you were a kid to me you know because i was already in my 30s yeah and we that was at the time when we were all wearing our either an ironic t-shirt like I do my own stunts or it was like a vintage rock tee yeah. with our blazers. Yeah. That yeah. was the look. And then our jeans with tons of holes and yeah. some Chuck Taylors. Wait, right. is, that, is that a passe look now? It's well, I mean, you could, you could still do it and people would be like, Oh yeah, he's a rocker. Yeah. But I mean, um, if I do it, this is pre affliction jeans. Yes. Pre affliction. <laughs> okay. Pre skinny. Yeah. yeah. It was like, everybody was wearing like express <laughs> jeans with the bell bottoms came out for like maybe like two to four. I think they're called boot cut jeans. Yeah. Well, they, we, they were like, they flared out, believe me, because I had to be in the damn cover of the Rush Low record with the big flare out jeans. They and looked at me, they're, they're like, actually on their way back, it seems and they're like. They're coming back, really? dude. Yeah. I know, but I love skinny jeans because it's just like, you know, you're like, look at my calves. And it just makes every, <laughs> it just makes everything, I don't know. I, just, I, and even <laughs> cause a fat guy like myself, I mean, I like the skinny jeans. They got to be elastic. They got yeah. the little little give to them. Well, I mean, especially but, if Courtney's making sourdough. You know? I know. But I mean, it's like recently I'm looking for dress pants. And like for guys like me, all the legs are like friggin' wearing smokestacks. They're like big cylindrical, just like, you know. You, might, you know what you might be able to get away with now? Some Lululemon or some Viore um, athleisure pants. So a lot of golfers wear them, but then Do they, you want the, the they va -va taper. Room on the no, they taper at the bottom. So like that jacket you're wearing right now, that's just not off the rack, man. That's nice, man. That is that is something very, very, very different. I like it. You got it uh, from H and M, or uh, and I got to give my wife credit for this. She pick it so, out. She did. Now, what is <clears throat> what 
does <sighs> how lucky is this girl that she you're like the one of the most handsome drummers I've ever met in my life. I mean, I'm a straight guy. You know what I mean? Okay. But I, but Jim, <laughs> what I'm saying is I hope she feels this that is way. Like this, this is he's like the Diet <clears throat> Coke guy, you know, where all the girls are waiting for the Diet Coke guy. I, to come. I thought Chris Cordell was walking up the uh, to the backyard. You know what's crazy? You know. I I never heard that before until literally a week ago and that's the second really yeah. i don't know how you would not know that i mean it's yeah. like you do you're I, i'm waiting Brian for you to Austin sing black Green, hole Sun. rob low um, oh yeah but never chris cornell i thought it's immediate who i thought of i'll, I'll do it I'll, I'll take a picture of you send it to my wife she'll she'll either tell me i'm out of my mind because i i have a, a penchant for telling people that or at least once upon a time i did that they look like unflattering people so yeah, Jim. Yeah. Don't Chris Cornell is not unflattering. Yeah, he's not, a cool, I, I, like, cool we, dude. We had a, uh, a friend of ours who uh, was marrying a guy who looked, I thought, like Martin, <laughs> like Martin Short. <laughs> and uh, I told him so. And Courtney's like, dude. I'm like, what? You don't tell people that they look like Martin. I'm like, what's the problem? Early career or like now? Well, you know, like uh, from from oh. inner space. Yeah. You know oh. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think Bet Martin. Anyways, let's talk guy. about your gear. Um, <laughs> 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 hey, so we do we do have um, one company in common. Well, there's Remo, which is okay, like, and then Gretsch is part of the DW family. Yeah, that's right. So, um, you know what's so funny is that I don't have never owned a Gretsch drum set. What is the appeal? There's something very specific. Is it the bearing edges or the materials, the coating they put on inside the shell, or what makes it that great Gretsch sound? Man, I, diecast hoops. I think it's a little bit of yeah, everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, there's just everybody makes great stuff. You I know, know, right? I just had a um, all my old, you know. A lot of old Carlos pictures. He was playing Gretsch. And when I first, you know, became good friends with Shannon Forrest, he yeah. was tracking a lot with Gretsch. And I just really dug the sound. They, um, they're, you know, they distort a little bit, but they're warm and resonant and yeah. just, I don't know. Just Even that Renown series, I've had that one time as a backline. It was yeah. like, do you find this sometimes? I feel like sometimes the more... Not student model, but like lower to mid level series of a brand sometimes sounds better than the some of the higher, more expensive stuff. Yeah, they're almost self gating sometimes. I mean, they yeah, they're not so you know high def and resonant. Mm -hmm. You know, high they fidelity. Just, yeah, you know, yeah. So, what are you using um, uh, for heads uh, these days? For the Remos. Are you a double ply head on the Tom's guy? I've always, yeah, I'm Me a too. coded, coded emperor. Yep. Um, I did the Ambassador X for a little while. Uh, but generally speaking, emperors, coded yeah. emperors. Yeah. Always coded. Um snare, I'm using the P seventy seven. You seen I mean, those? Me too. Yeah. Yeah. You can crank it, you can drop it. Yeah. It works everywhere. Yep. What about and, the dial tunes? Have you guys tried those yet? Where you can dial it in? I've never used those. Have you? I, I tried. I bought one of their drums, and mm -hmm. um, I sent it back. Really? Yeah. No. I, yeah. Wait, that's a drum or the tuner? It's a drum. Oh, it's a, it actually comes with a yeah, little dial on the side of it, and you can. Oh dial, yeah. It tensions the bottom and the evenly, bottom hmm. and top edge. I think it's a great technology. Yeah. I just wasn't into the sound of the drum, you know. You know, yeah. you know how that. Well, because sometimes you want to tune the bottom head a little bit lower, or uh... I, I'm, as a general rule, I don't know about you, but on the snare drum, I will crank the bottom head and then use the tension on the top head to determine the pitch, you know, yeah. and just kind of leave the bottom sitting kind of cranked up. So it doesn't matter it, what pitch the bottom head is at. In I, your... I just adjust the top. Would yeah. you adjust the top and bottom? Um, on a snare drum, yeah. If I find that the drums just if it's choking, you got a little gangly, yeah, like an annoying ring. A lot of times, if you bring the bottom head up a little, yeah. it will, yeah. That's why minimize I minimize. Cr I crank the bottom head. Yeah. And Does then, it matter to have each lug location the same pitch though on the bottom head? As much as possible. It's right. hard to do because you have to like put a you put a stick between underneath the snare bed, yeah. and then so you can still hear the pitch of the mm -hmm. right. You know. But on toms, it's different. You want the bottom head to be a little lower, right? So you do. Some people, I, I'm usually a bottom head's a little higher on all yeah. the drums. Bottom head's higher, <clears throat> so you get a pitch bend. 
Really? Do, do. That's what I've been doing wrong. <laughs> Top, bottom tighter. Or same pitch. Like Johnny, I don't know what Harry does, but you know, Johnny tunes my Tom's top and bottom pretty much the same pitch. Okay. It works good on DWs, you know. But if I'm left to my own druthers, you know, when I'm doing my own teching, mm -hmm. the bottom head's a little tighter. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. A game changer for me in snare world, and I got to give Chris McHugh credit for this, is I don't know what snare wires you use. Um, I use the pure sound. The pure sounds, yeah. They have their orchestral snare wires. Yeah. For symphony playing. Yes. They're like, they're really similar to the way Steve Gadd's signature snares are made. Big coils, only 12. Yeah. Eight, 12, maybe 14 of them, not a lot of them. And they just, it just, ever since, that was in 2013 when he told me about those. And I just yeah. put them, I put them on every drum. On every drum. It just, now, it, they're hard to find in anything other than a 14-inch, but I don't even know if they make them in anything but do you, a 14-inch. Do you use the 12 strand? The 12? Yeah. Okay, it's the classical? Yeah, the uh, orchestral, orchestral snare wires, yeah. Yeah, because I'm a pure sound guy, yeah. They, or the canopus, you know, yeah. or the... Um, um, yeah, so that's a trick that Chris, you know... It, yeah, he said, man, check these wires out. And ever since then, it just really makes your snare sound like the best version of itself. It's just... Yeah. And wow. when you really lay into it, they just like puff out. Yeah. But they just, man. They, then the it's crispy that, little You know when stuff. you hear like Gad play, it's almost like his snares are half turned off. Mm. It just, yeah, they're not overly snary, but yeah. they're just, man, I, I love them. Yeah. They're great. Chris now, McHugh, he's like a surgeon when it comes to drums. I mean, he is, he's, I feel like one of the few, I'm not this guy. I am not the guy who can completely bury a click for three and a half minutes. Yeah. I'm just, it's not in my DNA. Yeah. But Chris can do it. Yeah. And he does. And if anything is, I mean, he's doing, he's been doing this stuff uh, on Instagram and his Facebook feeds. I'm just, he's having fun. He's having a good time. He's yeah. like in his living room. I know. It's really yeah. just jamming out. I think his new girlfriend is, as maybe I'm assuming encouraged him to, Hey, like, let's just post fun stuff. It doesn't yeah. have to be so serious. Okay. Yeah. Which is great. Like Mike, Mike Tirana's got to do it. Yeah. You know? So um, Chris, Chris McHugh has kind of been a, a staple in your life because you have gone out on the road with a lot of acts where he has played the drums on the stuff. So you're probably very intimately aware of his, mm -hmm. how his brain works, you know? Yeah. But then when you got to be with Little Big Town, Jay Joyce is, was the producer and you're playing on that record and you got to do some really cool creative stuff like found sounds and the- yeah. The Johnny Rab symbol yeah. symbol thing that yeah. he's got. So, what was what was that uh, recording experience like? It's got to be fun to walk into an elevator or a grocery store and go, "Oh my God, that's me!" Yeah, it was cool, man. It was great. Um, they had always at Little Big Town. They had you know always just done the session guy thing and was great for him. They just decided to change it up and go with another producer. And Jay was a fan, as a fan of bands, you know, yeah. and he heard the band, which at that point was the four of them and a three piece band behind him. And he, he thought it was a cool thing. And so we just made two records. Yeah. Back to back, you know, and on a pontoon. The, uh, what was your first <laughs> You moved right from at 18 down here from New York, upstate New York. Isn't that amazing? It is. I mean, that's, you have to be pretty bold, conf, confident. Uh, uh, At 18, I, I didn't know how to do my laundry. I was, I mean, I, you, you know, you started around that area playing with people and everything, right? So you cut your teeth. Yeah. Uh, getting down here, what was like your first milestone goal that you wanted to achieve? Because I mean, it's a, like, just get it. Get game. on a tour bus, be with yeah. a, a, you know. Like, how'd you feel? Like, you know, you're, you're playing with named artists and stuff. Was it kind of like, oh my gosh, we you really know, like. I can't, can't believe this. Or? It was cool. I mean, it was it was just a you know for some people it yeah. goes like this, and for me it just kind of just slow and steady. That's how yeah. you want yeah. slow and steady rhythm race. You know what he wanted to do, Jim? He wanted to get a good gig and make a lot of cash. I, that was going to be. I was going to practice, 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 practice. Mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. Get a good gig and make a lot of make a lot of cash. What's so that from? I, it, well, I'll tell you what it's from. It's from him. <laughs> it's from Rich Redmond. I, I don't know what... You met my sister before, too, because we 
you had something going on at your house. This was like late 90s, early 2000s. Like a rental house with like guys? And yeah, a band like house? he had like a party. It was like a oh, yeah. band <laughs> promotion. Hey, I don't know what it was. We man. always had parties. And we just went and and that was like one thing I remember. You were, I think you were still working with maybe... Pam or Tillis. had just worked with Pam Tillis. Yes. You know? But, uh, yeah. yeah. Practice, we, that's practice, the thing is that practice. practice. You guys never, like, occur to me, if I were in your shoes and pursuing careers like you guys do and did, like, that first major artist, you're like, I am backing up, you know, the band Perry or the Wreckers or, well, you know, I mean, Rod, you know, these yeah. big names. I mean, I get, I get it. Eventually, it's just like, okay, it's just, you know, they put on their pants two legs, one leg at a time. Well, his dad played music, so he was around it all the time. So yeah, it's I, still, but I mean, so I I did too. Yeah. I mean, it was a big deal when we opened for, um, oh gosh, Nuclear Assault. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day at the Briar Patch in Carmel. Wow. You ever hear that? Uh-uh. No, okay. we have never heard of that. But I'm sure, it was a, I'm sure it was a great time, Jim. Um, what, one no, he's really, never heard of that. Really cool thing is, you know, my my growing up in New York. I mean, but you know, listening to my uncles play. I mean, they played at every family get together and, yeah. and gigs all over the place. But it was like, it wasn't just, you know, it was like John Prine and Ricky Skaggs and Merle you know Merle Haggard and then Dire Straits and Creedence Clearwater and yeah, you know, it was just like it was everything. Yeah, you know. Um, but when you're actually in the room with the guys, with the artists, there's got to be yeah, for every person. You got to admit it. So it's, it's there's got to be like the first time I met a celebrity was uh, he was on Law and Order. He played one of the detectives. Oh. Um, 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 I mean, everybody's been on Law and Order. Yeah, but uh, he's a comedian. Um, he was, he, we just lost him too. Right. Yeah. Right. So anyway, he was one of the first big voices when I moved to Vegas because we had a ton of people that came through the Vegas radio stations, and I hear I heard his voice. It was Belzer, Richard Belzer, Belzer. Richard Belzer, and I'm going, holy crap, that's Richard Belzer. Here I I came from this podunk radio station in in Connecticut. I think the biggest person we had in was uh, Jim Cook from uh, Sam Adams Brewing. Okay. All right. He was the CEO of Sam Adams. Yeah. And I had met um, uh, Captain Lou Albano. That was my, I'm like, yeah, I'm not Captain Lou. Oh, and on the last day of my, my job there, I met Adam Sandler because he was filming in New Milford, Connecticut for Mr. Deeds. Oh, yeah. So we got to, I got to meet him. That was kind of cool. Yeah, cool. Richard Belzer's a great comedian. But, and then but he, the thing he, is, yeah. is that I was like, that's freaking Richard Belzer. Holy yeah. crap. And then all of a sudden I met like, you know, Queen Latifah and yeah. Snoop Dogg and all these But remember, people. they put their pants on one leg at a time and they poop and pay taxes. But, but you know That's that right. feeling when you're around, like, what? they're sitting right in front of me. Holy you know. God. It's like I not only like just, just, just just riffing with them, but yeah. you're, you're performing with them. And what was that like and who uh, was it yeah. for you? Some yeah. of the cool, you know, it, it is cool. I Like, yeah. I don't take a single day of it for granted, man. It's just oh. awesome just getting to do it, right? Yeah. But, you know... Because of, you know, growing up and listening to my uncles and stuff, I remember when, like, I was with Keith, and we did this private show, and Fogarty came out, and so yeah. we learned for his songs, and, like, <clears throat> most of them were tunes that I grew up listening to. Yeah. You which, know, which ones? Fortunate Son. Fortunate Rent, Son. Uh, Can You See the Rain? Um, uh, feel, uh, uh, down the, the Old Man Down the Road. I wish the we would have did that one. We didn't do that one. Um, it's a great song. That's solo career. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We did three of them. I can't remember what the other one. I bet. And then Cheryl Crow comes out. You back her up. I mean, it's like some real shit. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Everyone's wearing leather pants. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just... It's just it's you see bad. the leather pants, don't you? I mean, it, it's amazing. Then, you know, it's isn't it fun? You know, you're on the CBS Early Morning Show. You're on The View. You know, you're doing the CMA Festival. Good Morning America. Kimmel, Leno, O'Brien, Dancing with the Stars, Craig Ferguson, Jim Fallon, oh. Ellen DeGeneres. This... It, 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 uh, when I walk into those studios and I see the drums and it's freezing in there and everyone's got their coffee and there's a guy with the headset he's like, all right, places, people, we got 10 minutes. I love it. Yeah, it's cool. You know? Why is that? Why do you I, love I love show business. Like there's no that. other business. There's what no partic- business like show business. Like bang, gang, gang, gang. Come on. Okay. Um, Dial it back. That's what I'm just saying. It's, <laughs> it's where I want to be. You know what I mean? But I mean, what about that particular scenario? You know, it does it for you. I mean, you've, you've, you've played, you know, 
but, but what's it? Eight hundred thousand people or something like that? Or I, I mean, we, we, you know, this you've done football stadiums, right? I yeah. mean, and then you know, we both eight, have. There's eighty thousand people there. Yeah. If you do ten of those, that's pushing a million people, right? In eight shows. But I'm saying, yeah. but something about the TV or aspect of it, yeah. What what about that floats your boat? Oh, I just I just love that. Uh, all right, pl people, places, five minutes, five it's minutes. Because you know you're you're playing and, the millions of people. And the curtain comes up, and it's just oh my god. You yeah. guys have you guys done Vegas like residency thing? Um, no, we haven't done that. How is that? Since you brought that up, the the you know where is Carrie? Is she at the Bellagio or like, Resorts World? Resorts World. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great, man. It's yeah. Where's that? Where's Resort? Is that's next? That's it's next a new to the Bellagio. Place. Uh, it's like on the north side of the strip. So like the wind, like wait. Okay. It's like almost like they just um, opened, uh, what is it? Fountain Blue. Mm -hmm. It's right across the street from there. So. South of Circus Circus around the strip. It's across the street from Circus Circus. Do you okay. Like, mm -hmm. uh, do you like Vegas? Like, are you a Vegas guy? Do you like gamble at all or anything? No. I don't gamble. No, I like to keep the, my money. This situation is cool though. I mean, I'm I'm not a Vegas guy, but uh, it's it's nice. It's clean. It's new. Your gear stays set up. Yeah. Three shows a week. Nice. Nice room. So it's, it's Thursday, cool. Friday, Saturday. It's, and they uh, fly out. It's in uh, and out. We usually, you know, because there's a few months in between, we'll go out beginning of the week, do a couple dress rehearsals, and then we play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Where do they put you up? At the hotel? Right there, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, my God. Imagine now, that. I will tell you this about Carrie Underwood. She never skips leg day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She needs to eat a steak. No, I mean she's. I mean, I think she probably just eats nothing but protein. I mean, yeah. she's just sinewy legs. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait, have you ever seen her? Do you ever get, like see her work out at all? And what's her routine like? I haven't seen her. What what her workout routine is? No. No, <laughs> she, she doesn't do leg presses or anything like that. No. I'm sure she's got a trainer that travels with her, and yeah. it's like, all right, Carrie, let's go for the next ninety minutes. You're mine. That's right. Yeah, you know, one of those kind of things. I, I'd be curious if you like, you know, you know, the incline leg press machine. Yeah. Oh yeah, I used to do like a ton on that. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, two thousand pounds. Yeah, oh my God, Jim. Well, it was when I was nineteen years old. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy. Jim did Body for Life. I don't even remember that program back in the day where you would eat protein pancakes. You would eat six times a day. Salmon you would, burgers. You would supplement with yeah. um, shakes and bars. And this guy was like ripped. Yes, obviously I fell off the wagon. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Oh, you know, we're working on it. <laughs> but that's great. Your spirit and your character and your energy. And all those muscles are still there. They're still there. They're just, yeah. you know, hidden. <laughs> and under, underdeveloped. It's, it's so cute. Oh, I love we it. We don't have, you know, these uh, genetically predisposed bodies like... Well, Seth, you know, what do Seth you do for... What, do you have like a thing? Are you like a runner guy? Or are you just like... I? Just, I think he walks into the gym and he just looks at them menacingly and they they lift themselves. Yeah, what do you do? Do you yeah. have a thing? Uh, I mean, I'm always busy at home. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I'll do a couple body weight circuits a week, you know. Yeah. Two or two just or like four. Just like, you know, like an app, like a like a fitness app yeah, or something. Yeah, just, just to, but otherwise, I mean, I'm just always. Cutting lawns. Yeah. And, Cutting down trees. I'm always just doing stuff at the house and the awesome. property and whatever. Now, now that sounds to me Chasing like the guy. Around, do, you, you know? do you have a kit at the house? Do you do some playing at mm -hmm. the house, or do you just say, you know what? Because I've seen actually seen some videos where you have some like like tie dye stuff behind you and stuff. Yeah, I've got a where I can record. You know, yeah. I like getting down there and being creative and playing oh, downstairs. Yeah. Oh, nice. Basement. So are, yeah. Is it mainly just maintenance of the yard? Because you'd said before we started recording, you own eight acres. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's a full time job in and of itself, maintaining yeah. that. But you're yeah. not like pushing a lawnmower. You're on a probably a sixty inch commercial. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Zero turn. And I, you know, when I'm busy or on the road, I get get the boys to step up. Yeah. And just say you want your you want your allowance. Let's go. Yeah. yeah you want to eat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you're not like, how often are you going to mow that lawn? Is it an actual lawn or is it a meadow? Are you growing hay? That kind of stuff? No, I'm not using it for hay, but I'll, I, anything that, that's uh, not wooded right. gets mowed, you know? I mean, so, hay I is, mean when, uh, it's, when it's consistently raining and the weather's nice, it could be, you know, at least once a week. Yeah. But it's so dry right now. Well, here yeah. we, we've got, uh, I think we're at seven acres here. Yeah, I think we're at seven acres. Nice. We try to do it every two every two weeks. Yeah, yeah. What's Roush? Like um, German, German. Mm -hmm. So, do you do some cooking? Like, like I, today I make the kraut. <laughs> 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 the sour the sour kraut. What was yeah. that? Yeah, 
Is that your Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? It's just t- today would make it. A lot of schnitzels. <laughs> yeah. You know? I'd, I'd, but pretzels. Hey, he, oh, you know. speaking of Vegas, Hofbra House. Oh, okay. Welcome. Have you been there? Uh uh-uh. uh. Off of Paradise. Okay. Yeah. It's a big. It's a, it's 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 a basically replication of the Hofbrauhaus House in Germany. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. like near the airport, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's right next to uh, right we, down the road from the old Hard Rock. Yeah. Whatever that is now. Yep. So. I've passed it um, on the way to the airport. I believe some of that I know is opening up a new restaurant in Vegas, so I'll be out there later this year doing a thing. Who, who's opening? I, someone I know is opening a restaurant there. Well, who? You know. Oh. Yeah. I got Norm. Yeah. Norm's Norm. opening the restaurant. There's Norm's breakfast. That's right. Um, so, <laughs> so you get the gig with Keith because it's a, it's a personal recommendation from Jerry Flowers, mm-hmm. right? So you get the gig. And that had to be fun. Were you were you in there with uh, Danny Rader the whole time? Yep. <laughs> um, another very well dressed man. Yep. Because he, tell- he was telling me that uh, mm. there like sometimes there's a budget and they would dress you guys and you would keep the clothes. Mm-hmm. I love that. Did you have a wardrobe locker on the road? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice. And they go and they do your dry cleaning and everything. Yeah, they cool. would hate me because I sweat so much. I'm like disgusting. Everyone's like, "Why is your suitcase so big?" I'm like, "Because I sweat ten times as much as you do. You bass playing." You know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was cool. So in 2013, Little Big Town went out and opened for Keith. So for six months, you know, I mean, Keith's band was a fan of what we were doing and the records that we made, and they would watch almost every gig. And so it was like a six month audition. I mean, so That's awesome. the, the tour had ended like February 2014. And so that was that. And so fast forward to the end of that year, I wake up one day and Jerry had texted me uh, from Hawaii just saying that some changes were made and he wanted to know if I was interested in... Did you have to audition or was it just like, it's yours, kid? Uh, I did audition. Um, It was, I was told it was a formality, but yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Just to, but Yeah. yeah. That's an awesome body of work. I mean, just great tunes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and he's just such a player. Yeah, it was you fun. Know? That's awesome. And then um, now that you're with uh, Carrie, another great songbook. So you've got, there's a lot of Chris in there and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, and she has shuffles. I mean, the shuffles have died, but she's got some beige, dash, 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 dash. <laughs> now, now, right before you, wasn't there a girl named Elizabeth Chan doing the gig? Yeah. So, okay, so Jim, we have to get more female drummers. We, I, need, we need to. Females, I am... Not a pig. I really want you on the show. I just, we have to get more female drummers on the show. By virtue of the instrument, it's a male-dominated instrument. I know. We've got Sarah, you know, you got Sarah and you got Elizabeth. And Elizabeth's been playing in some like house bands for like ACM honors and like Mm -hmm. Americana awards and stuff and stuff. So, but you know, these things, we they're like chapters, you know, there's time for a change or for whatever reason. You must be loving it. That songbook, it's got to be great. It's great. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Who's your favorite female drummer? Sorry. Gina Shock from the Go Go's. We had her on the show. We did. We did have her on the show. Yeah. You know who I just met recently? Uh, I didn't realize she was at one of our Vegas shows, and I walked. We do like a hang backstage sometimes in the lounge there, and so I walked in, and immediately another Gretsch endorser, Cindy Blackman, was oh, there. Oh yeah. yeah, huge fan of Cindy. You she know, lives love, in Vegas. love her playing. Yeah, she yeah. lives in Vegas um, with Carlos. You know, yeah, yeah. so. That, you know, she'd be definitely up there. That is amazing. So you have, you know, you have achieved like, this is like 0.0001% of the world that of guys that own drums. And you've taken it to the highest level where you haven't had a day job in like long over a decade, maybe two decades. You're raising a family, you know, you own land, the American dream, you're a homeowner. How'd you do it? I mean, what would you what would you tell the kid that that's a lot, coming? A lot of practice, practice, <laughs> get a good gig, and make a lot of cash. It's a over, China with rivets. Yeah, over here, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Put so, your keys on it. But, put I mean, anything on it that'll make noise. You know? What would you do? What what do you, what do you tell him? You know. I don't know, man. You know, it's. I like, mean, you be a good person. Play great. Yeah. Try to just show up prepared. All that. Try not to be an asshole, you know. Yeah, just, yeah, but you're not. You're just such a nice guy, you know, and that really helps things. Uh, you I know, think. I I I look back, man. I, I'm just thankful that 
every time I went to take a step, there was something there, you know? Yeah. Um, I thought he was going to say, you know, I'm, I'm kind of not a nice guy, Rich. You just haven't <laughs> seen that side of me. Yeah. <laughs> just a lot of faith, man. Just, yeah. You know, the family came and it just, luckily the work's been there, you know? Were you I mean? always thinking like several steps ahead or you just kind of take it day by day? It's easy to worry about the future, but. I think just taking it day by day is the best you can do. Like wor- like worrying doesn't do anything. That's some wisdom yeah. right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because I, I can be a worry wart, you know, but it doesn't do you any good, man. What? Let's let's just control let's just control the things that we have control over. Like or let's yeah. focus on the things that we have control over and then, you know, hopefully mm-hmm. everything else will work out. So listen. Um, remember I was always telling, remember I was always telling you that I thought you could be a model and then I do a Google search on you and you you're at the block agency. Yeah. How I long just, you been just, doing that? Just recently. I just And uh, you were wearing that jacket. I was, yeah. Great photos. So I was at that agency for maybe a year just for to do acting auditions and stuff. Yep. Um but that's gotta be exciting. What are you do is he sending you out doing like lifestyle shoots and stuff? No, you like, know, I really haven't done this really new. Yeah. I just Send them some stuff. They threw me up there. I haven't really done yeah. anything at this point. Oh, he's going to be great. David Meyer plays guitar with Don, and he's with them. And, uh, oh, yeah. I love David Meyer. Yeah. He's David's great. like, oh, man, you should, you know, send him your stuff. So I, I, it's so new right now. I just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just See, another I knew avenue. It. I knew it. It's so exciting that I knew that you would do that thing. So also, Harry McCarthy, Drum Paradise. Our drums are parked next to each other. He was your tech on the road. That had to be so fun, right? It was awesome. I mean, Harry's be- the best, yeah. Because he's worked with Gad and he's worked with everyone, mm-hmm. you know? So he probably has a lot of stories. Yeah. You know? Did you get to hear the stories? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stories. I keep telling, I, I'm going to tell Harry again that we need to have like a Drum Paradise Christmas party or just like December party where we all get together. <laughs> that would be awesome. You know what I mean? It's like, it'd be like herding cats, trying to get yeah. trying to get everybody together. But I'm trying to think what day would be best to do it. Maybe like... That would be a cool maybe thing like to do. Maybe like a Sunday Remember or the something? drummer's lunch? Drummer's luncheons. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Something like that once a year. Just uh, Yeah, because there's some drummer's lunches that exist. Like, it's the first Wednesday of every, you know, I mean, yeah. some of those things. Um, you but, know, I, I got to say, I stumbled across one of those lunches once. I think it was in Sam and Zoe's. Yeah. And uh, it was our friend Kevin Murphy. I think Ben Caesar was there. A bunch of guys, groups yeah. of guys. Yeah, Keo. And I, and, I, and I recognized them, and I, I was like going to walk up to the table, but it's like, they're an intimidating looking bunch, you know, and they have no idea who the hell I was. Well, you yeah. could just be like, I'm, you know, they would know. Yeah. Drop it. Drop it. Drop the, uh, hey, I'm, I'm Rich's co host. And they're like, anyways, yeah. then they turn their back. Yeah. That's a, you know, <laughs> it's like crazy. Yeah. Um, well, anything new coming up that you're like so excited about or besides the, you know, the modeling? It's incredible. Are you working on your blue steel? Oh, he's got that. <laughs> he's got that, yeah. he's got that uh, down. They're all the same. Um, uh, you know, we're doing... We're, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had a thought yeah. off into my head. It would be hilarious if he did like a line of like modeling photos for Big and Tall. <laughs> what? Why is this like wearing like swimming in clothes for guys like, you know, that are huge. Yeah. And, but, you know, he's like doing all the modeling. I don't know. It just struck me as funny. He has to have a fat suit. Right. Yeah. Not even. Okay. Just, just, you know, yeah. sorry. I'll see myself out. So, hey, um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that if it, which, you know, you're doing the carry thing, you're raising a family, you're, you're doing the modeling, you know. And then, do, do you work on Music Row from time to time? Like, some producers get a hold of you? Yeah, like, every and, like, once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't seem stressed about it. Like, I was so stressed about it. I was like, oh, my God, I'm on the road so much, and I got to try to keep this other thing alive. And it's really hard to yeah, it is. balance. Yeah. It's, um... It's always been enough. I, you know, I started out, I wanted I wanted to get on the road to start working. Um, but, I mean, even from a young age, I remember when I was, was really young, hugely into basketball, you know, and I was like, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in the NBA, and then when the season's off, I'll go be a studio musician. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when I was 11 years yeah. old, I was saying that, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, you know, I wanted to just live in the studio. But it's been a good balance of both, you know. Um, no. um, and you see a lot of those guys kind of hitting the road, you know, too. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I um, when I when the studio comes up, I love it. Yeah, I love recording. I love being able to listen to, you know, w- playbacks. Yeah, and you're like, that's 
that's me. I'm bringing someone's song to life. This is, we're impacting people. This is great. Yeah. But it's been a good combination of both, you know? I, I agree. Yeah, you man. still playing basketball? Yeah, I always love, I mean, I don't play a lot anymore. My, I, I got the kids now, so I play with them, but yeah, um, That's yeah, I fun. still love it. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Four boys and two girls. That's an active household, man. Yeah. Do they, ha- please tell me they have bedtimes. Oh, well, technically, yeah. Yeah, okay. Which, but is it getting him to listen? Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like anything. Yeah. Especially um, in the summer, man. It's like 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11. You're like trying to be like, because they just want to play. I mean, it doesn't yeah. get dark till nine o'clock and it's, you know, but yeah. it's, it's cool. That's got to be so satisfying. Like I haven't, I haven't had one child and you've had six. That's amazing. Yeah. That's some amazing life experiences. And you will have somebody to pack your bed sores and to help you later in life. <laughs> Dad, right. here's your soup. Don't spell. That's right. He's got definitely six chances of someone helping him out. <laughs> That's right. Because yeah. typically a lot of them would be like, screw that noise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's, I think we, we're, we're banking on at least one. You know, that's the thing is that's how you thank your parents for help for you is you in their later life you're supposed to help them sure and oh, since, in so many cultures that is like a great honor but in the united states eh, it's not as much it's like i'm not so good luck know. my parents moved away from me <laughs> yeah what do you do then well then you, you know you call them on christmas only christmas see you here's call. the thing is that my mom is uh like we were talking about Catholicism before we started. Yeah. She was like Catholic guilt like you wouldn't believe. It was hilarious. She was spreading on thick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She used to pull the, uh, oh, where you going? <laughs> oh, I'm going out with my friends. Oh, good. When you get back, we got something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're you're in the suspense all night. It ruins your right night. out loud. Yeah. God dang it. Yeah. Okay. You know, so- and, then, and then she would, uh, you know, she was, the, <clears throat> we called her the card Nazi because... If you didn't send a Christmas card or a birthday card, you could call her. You could send gifts. Like every, I've, I've actually screwed, I said, I'm not sending you cards. They're, they're stupid. Yeah. I'll send you cookies. Yeah. But she seems about like that now. You can't but eat when a card, I started yeah. doing that, yeah. I didn't get a card from you. I'm like, who cares? I'm calling you and I'm talking to you right now. Who cares? So this is Jim. He's card? airing his dirty laundry mm-hmm. about his relationship <laughs> with his mother. You guys heard it here first on the Rich Redmond Show. It's not just drums. <laughs> We're, we are airing our dirty laundry. So um, don't think about this. It's the favorite five. Favorite color. <clears throat> the what? Favorite color. Favorite color. Uh, blue. Wow. We're getting so many blues. We're getting a lot of blues. Now, why blue? Cause sky, ocean. Like. I don't know. I just. Yeah. yeah. Like even blue. when I was young, I just it was always blue. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Food or dish? Favorite food or dish? Pizza. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Even the Red Baron's great. Okay, yeah. did we talk about this? Him building his own pizza. You do a lot of stuff in the backyard. You're building gazebos, construction. Yeah, love, love oh yeah, the pizza. pizza. You built a brick pizza oven. Yeah, yeah. in your backyard because yeah. you got spoiled like me, and probably like you at some well, good point. Good dough. Rich. All you make the yeah. dough. Yeah. Yeah. Northeast has just got great pizza. It's tough to find. Yep. Vegas, it's very tough to find good pizza. It's getting I easier. I mean, it seems like pizza's just like had this resurgence nice. it has but it has to be done the right way yeah you well know? we've got sal's in brentwood and it, you know in all honesty it's a it's, it's a, not bad it's a great crust it's it's done it's cooked all the when way when you move down here we have salvo's oh, okay. which is actually sal's yeah yeah and we have nelly's which is the daughter of joey's house of pizza oh, I, like them? To, I want to try i both. do remember them yeah too. they were up in elm hill for a while they were in brentwood now Check them out. It's, uh, what are they called? Uh, Macca Bella at Riverside. It's what it's called. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll hit all these things because I'm going to have to friend. I'm going to have to have a friend if I live down here. Yeah. And that's you, Jim. I'm coming over. Okay. So favorite color, favorite food. I'd love the pizza. And then your favorite drink. It could be adult or non. Favorite drink. We probably oh, shared a drink back scotch. in the day. Scotch. Oh, that Chris Powell loves scotch. Yeah. Now, this is something that I haven't experimented with how long you've been doing that? Is it, you know, because, you know, country music is such a whiskey culture, you know? I mean, I love a good beer, uh, like a good beer, you know. Are you an IPA guy? IPAs, stouts, yeah. dark, dark stouts. But wow. Scotch, you know, the whiskey is like, scotch is cool. It's just um, the real smoky, peaty stuff. That's what I like. I oh, so it tastes like ever... earth. Yeah. 
I don't know if I've ever had a scotch. And Maybe there's I a have. lot less sugar in it than bourbon and whiskey. Oh, it? that's something that'd be, be good for my waistline. You heard it here from a male model. Um, we're talking oh. scotch here, guys. Okay, favorite movie? Probably The Fugitive. Or oh. any of the Back to the Futures. Classic. Harrison Ford? Yeah, Fair but mind. The Fugitive, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah, Fugitive. That was, that was a good early 90s. Yeah. Kind of a kind mid, of a mid nineties. Yeah, mid nineties, yeah. Harrison Ford, total total stud, man. Yeah. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. That's right. Right. Jeez. Yeah. Well, and favorite mm. song. Now it could be because of the production. It could be the drummer. It could be the, the the lyrics. The the mood. It's just when you hear this, you celebrate it. You're like, okay, I wish this this goes to eleven. Man, favorite song. That's a tough one. I'm already thinking too much about it. Like, it's a tough question. So tough. It is. We got to ask him the tribute band question. That's a oh, good question. Well, that's, that's a good question. Well, you you yeah. want to trade it in for let's, song? Let's, let's, let's swap that question for the tribute okay, band. Jim, go for okay, it. Okay, so basically you cannot, uh, just for some re reason, you have to make a decision for the rest of your life, forsaking all other acts, play in a tribute band. Who's that tribute band going to be for? <laughs> The same music over and over again for the rest of your life. One one answer. Yeah, one answer. So I could go as far as like a maybe Zeppelin. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. And I'm not like a you know just because it's musical and it's yeah. you know it's a, they're a funk band. In reality. They're they're like an yeah. R and B like yeah. an old school R and B band. Yeah. 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 Like. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, Jim, that was pretty close to the exact tempo, dude. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. But I can also go like to the folky, you know, James Taylor mm -hmm. could do that too. That's yeah. a great songbook, and you get yeah. to do all the fills on "Fire and Rain," Russ Kunkel. Yeah, fantastic. What is the, what is the stuff that Carlos played on in the James Taylor songbook? Like some big hits. So, I think he joined the band '88. So never die young. Mm -hmm. That whole record. New Moonshine, he's on all New those Moonshine, yeah. tracks. I think, I think Steve Jordan's on one of those songs. Um, and then Hourglass, it's a great, great record. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything from 88 right up until, you know, yeah. 98. Our Gosh. guitar player, Jack Sizemore, you know Jack. Oh, yeah. Huge James Taylor fan. So he's familiar with, you know, the inside out, this whole body of work. Unbelievable. So, Jim... Yes. I'll ask you, what did we learn? There was so much that we talked about. We talked about the boldness that it took to come to a brand new city, the you know songwriting capital of the world at 18 years old, and the slow and steady climb playing with all these amazing artists, and the love of Hollywood playing all these great shows. We talked about great gear and, you know, the, the fake what, what, what did I learn? What did you learn? Carrie Underwood can probably leg press a ton. Yeah, she probably can. That's right. Yeah. Um, I learned that, <laughs> that Seth is, he's right in there and with, and has the ability to give advice to all these kids that are coming to town. They could be Berkeley graduates. They could be musician Institute grad, University of North Texas. They could be self-taught homeschooled. If you come here with a passion and a positive and a mindset mission. and a mission and you're patient and you're a good person with a firm handshake, got some talent, you could do it. You just, but you can't quit. And I don't feel like that was in your vocabulary. You're just like, I'm here. I'm going to do this. You know? Well, just, there's, a, there's just, no time lost in worrying about the future. Yeah. Just take said. every gig. Yeah. yeah. Even the bad ones. Yes. The ones where you got to play four sets till two in the morning. And a bowling what, alley, What's yeah. the thing yeah. from, from a newbie coming to town that you hear these days, like especially, when, oh, I'm not doing that. What, like, what grinds your gears when you hear cert certain things from... New talent coming to town. So it's got to be happening. Like, I'm just, not going to play Broadway. Yeah, just the, you know, the being picky. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's good to, but just, you know, if you're trying to be busy, then just stay busy. Work, you know? work begets work. Yeah. Work turns into work, you know. Mm -hmm. Or it could actually shut you down if you don't do it right. Credit well, to Chris Powell with the, uh, you know. 
Talking well, about germs. Well, the thing is, is if you're going to show up, even if you're playing lower Broadway, you're playing the smallest room, it pays the least amount of money, and you've got to learn the songs, the correct tempo, the correct parts. There's so many guys down there butchering the heck out of everything. Yeah. It's like, you're making us look bad, folks. Yeah. You know? Play yeah. Don't Stop Believing the right way. Yeah. Damn yeah. It. There is I, a right way to play it. Sure. I had to but, learn that one recently. Yeah. Tinka. Tinka. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have the bell on the Anne of Three. That's right. Well, it's, it's more than that. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. There's a, a um, skillfully, skillfully crafted song. Yeah. But Seth, I just got to say, you know, publicly that, you know, knowing you for 20 years and, you know, there'll be times, there'll be whole years that'll go by. We won't see each other. Sometimes we'll see each other in passing at the CMAs or the ACMs or the CMTs, one of the three letter shows. And it's just like wink, wink, hug, hug, high five. You're, you you did it, man. And um, I am happy for you. You and too. I, I am proud it. of you. I'm, I'm honored to be sitting here with you still. It's and, awesome. Well, I hope you found it um, amusing because we don't we don't like to have the type of podcast where we're like, what's the tension on your bass drum pedal? We were talking about tensions on snare drum heads. I yeah, thought well, that was interesting. Well, so. that's that you know that is good because yeah. you know. Did you ever experimented with um, tuning the snare drum to the key of the song? It's kind of fun, right? Did Jay ever make you do that or any? Did you no. Know? Yeah, I wasn't. I, you know, just kind of feel it, and if yeah. it sits in the track nice, that's where it's yeah, supposed to sit. Yeah, as long as it's not fighting anything. Yeah, you know, Ding. like that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. My Lars God. Saint Anger. The Saint Anger. Yeah. yeah. What, was, that a, was, that a, was that a Tama Bell brass snare drum on that song? It was just probably just an undampened snare. Yeah. Just ding. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they weren't gating at nothing. Yeah. You know? Well. Yeah. And it worked out for them. Uh, you know, it always does. Yeah, totally. Well, anyways. Have you seen all the guys on, like, he's just getting flamed lately on social media. Oh, it's hilarious. Lars? Like, you know, if, if Lars were to play James Taylor songs, and it's like, you know, the dude, he makes a whole channel out of it. He puts the sunglasses on, and he's getting up, and he's like... Doing the lips and everything, and everything's like go 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 go. It's pretty. Go 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 go. You know, it's just like how Lars would play. You know, certain songs. Totally. And there's like three or four guys doing it. It's a good channel. Hilarious. It is hilarious. I I lost my you know what when I saw it. Oh my gosh! There's one. There's one time where he's. I can't remember what song he is, but the entire thing is just him going. The whole time on the snare. And it's like, so the comments are what make it gold. Yeah. Like the snare is like, the, the, some, they said something like, the snare is called, it needs a rape whistle or something because it's just being attacked and obliterated. It's crazy what people will put their time into. But I I mean, I had a chuckle. I had a chuckle. Yeah. Hey, everyone, check out SethRausch.com and it's Rausch's. R A U S C H. It's German. <laughs> SethRausch.com. Check him out with Carrie Underwood. Check him out with Don Felder. <clears throat> man, we appreciate it. So happy Thank for you, you very and much. so proud yeah. of you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, absolutely. Jim, thanks for your time and talent. And to all the listeners, thank you for tuning in. If you love the show, be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show and buy my book, Making It in Country Music An Insider's Look at the Industry. It took a year of my life to write. Jeff Bezos will lick the stamp and send it to you. So appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredman.com forward slash podcasts.